Welcome to the C.S. Joseph Podcast. Today's question, what are some examples of what introverted sensing aspirational actually looks like? Interesting question. Uh, given that I have introverted sensing inferior, I guess it would make a lot of sense that uh, I would be the best person to answer this question. But honestly, so also would Chris Taylor. He would uh, have uh, plenty to share on the subject in terms of what it introverted sensing aspirational actually looks like what are some examples of it i mean let's let's examine let's examine first like what introverted sensing actually looks like as a function like what does it do what's its purpose what's its point so it's ultimately the function that represents legacy the most it's also the most concrete function of all of the eight functions it is the past it is memory uh it's basically the sum of every any one person's total experience of themselves whether or not they can actually remember it or not it's like their hard drive that's within their soul or within their mind that keeps track of all the information that they've accrued uh, throughout their life that is ultimately introverted sensing and there's some skills some personal mental skills that come as a result of having introverted sensing in your top four functions and for example, that would be uh, the skill of uh, endurance, fortitude, stamina, perseverance, grit, being able to just bury your teeth, gnash your teeth, and keep moving forward no matter what. It's also akin to self-discipline. It is this discipline function. It is the function with which a person can draw discipline from. And, and uh, it is also what a person needs to have a sense of what they should do. It's also where their sense of duty comes from. This is why in the military, the majority of the volunteers for the military are introverted sensors. A lot of SI users. SI users are very good at following orders because they just want to be told what to do. Instead of, you know, exercising their freedom of choice, which is what an NI user wants to do, especially a jealous NI user that sees what other people are doing and then they want to do what they want to do what those people are doing as well. Or they want to see what other people they are, do, are, are doing so that they can, like, come up with options or available choices for them. So, that's ultimately what introvert sensing looks like. But introverted sensing in an aspirational form, woo. Well, that's basically everything that we just talked about except 10 x basically. 10 x as in like, it's it's like super mega powerful. Powerful, but will burn out eventually. It's like, a, it's like your introverted sensing function, you know, just being regular, you know. It's like, it's like Goku with his black hair, very capable. But then all of a sudden it goes aspirational mode and boom, you got like green eyes with yellow hair and a flaming aura because you just gone super saiyan, basically. That's introverted sensing aspirational. And basically it gives you the ability to endure a lot more suffering than what you were doing previously. It means that you have reached the highest heights of personal strength and you're able to get through any situation and you're able to overcome any obstacle climb any mountain basically which is fantastic also to have the discipline it also ends up introverted sensing aspirational also leads to the highest amount of self-control available to any human being that is introverted sensing aspirational the ultimate form of self-control pretty awesome most people don't even realize that that's the case but yeah, haven't you ever noticed introverted sensing inferiors? They have a lot of self-control. They lead with self-control. Sometimes it's hard to get them to let go of self-control. And then once they do, well, the amount of violence that follows through extroverted sensing demon is insane and difficult to deal with. It's a huge problem, actually. It's one of the reasons why I take martial arts. 
to further develop my sense of self-discipline and further develop my sense of self-control so that if I do get into a combat situation or in a street fight, I'm not at risk of going too far and killing my opponent. This is why I have to practice self-control. That's ultimately what introverted sensing aspirational is for. Honing and utilizing one's self-control or their self-discipline to the max. So what are some examples of it? Well, for example, like it, throughout my life, like I have women that like offer themselves up to me, you know, they, they offer, they offer me like, like a sexual relationship, you know, they could be kind of easy about it and whatnot. And like, sometimes they think they can even like control me through sexuality, or whatever, but I just have the self-discipline just be like, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, it's like, it's like, you have I end up having this attitude where it's like, Hey, yeah, you're hot. That's cool. You know, you got a nice ass. That's great. But that doesn't mean I actually like you. Doesn't mean you're a likable person. Doesn't mean you're actually capable at keeping up a conversation with me. Doesn't mean you're interesting. It doesn't mean that I see you as somebody that I could like potentially grow old with, or would be actually be capable of taking care of me in my old age. Doesn't mean any of that. It's so interesting because there's so many men out there who are like, oh, look at that girl. She's smoking hot, you know? Uh, and, and I'm just like, yeah, but you don't even know her and you don't even know if you like her. But you want to like consider being in a relationship with her just because she's got a fine ass? Wow. That's uh, it's pretty sad there, bro. But this is an extremely common thing among men, especially men in Western society. For a person to have the self-discipline and the self-control to say no to a woman who's offering, like, sex, like, super quickly or right off the bat, or even, even if you're in a relationship, let's say you're married to a woman and she's trying to, like, potentially persuade you or take advantage of you or manipulate you in some way using sexuality and you're just like no no thanks and all of a sudden like oh man they have no power no power here etc that can be really scary that can be really scary for a woman right when faced with a man who has self-discipline the self-discipline and the self-control when it comes to honing himself in a sexual situation right because, I mean, hey, that must mean he might have other options. Or, hey, there might be some other girl that's uh, keeping him topped off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's possible. Or maybe he's just a guy who's just not interested in being controlled by what you think, what, what, what power you think you have between your legs, which is not much, if not at all, any at all, because you don't. It's so funny to me how, how, many, so, how, how much, so much women in my life, like, think that... I'm interested in that or think like they can control me in that area. It's hilarious to me. And I'm just like, yeah, no. No, you can't. No, you can't. It's just like, it's like every week, like, it's always like some new girl, whatever, just trying to obligate me, sending me naked photos of herself, like every week. I just, it's always just a new one every week. It's just, it's like super normal. In fact, this week alone, it was three different girls who did it. And I'm just like, apparently you're just used to men out there who have no self-control or self-discipline whatsoever. And then when it comes up, and then all of a sudden you have some guy who's just like, yeah, not interested in that, like whatever. And then they're like, oh, you must be gay then, er, and it's just like, no, I don't even know you. I don't even know, I don't even know if I like you. The only thing you got going for you is what, what, you're hot? You might be hot right now, or maybe they might not even be hot. That happens too, you know. But you're like, you might be hot right now. doesn't mean you're going to be hot tomorrow. So why should I commit to you? Why should I even consider being with you? Why should I, like, unite myself with you? Yeah, no. Not going to do that. I don't even know you. I don't even know if I like you. And I probably don't like you that much because you're sending me photos of yourself, which means to me you're probably willing to do that just as quickly to, like, any other guy out there. And then you're going to get mad at me when I don't respond in the way that you expect me to respond like all the other simps out there? You're ridiculous. Here's the reality of the situation, girls. Like, I don't have time for women that expect me to simp for them. I only have room for women in my life that simp for me. That's it. You ain't simping for me? 
I don't have time for you. I got so much other crap going on in my life. I got so much other things more important in my life. I don't care. So if you ain't simping for me, get out. Just stop. Like, don't even bother. Don't even bother getting sliding in my DMs. Don't even bother trying to call me. Don't even bother like trying to email me or like if you ain't simping, if you ain't submitting, get out. Like I ain't got time. I ain't got time for that. And that's ultimately the way introverted sensing aspirational is. That's ultimately what self-control and self-discipline is all about. You're just keenly aware of what should and should not get your attention. Okay? If it's so easy for you to give up your attention to women or to anything for that matter, then your attention is not really that valuable. My attention is super valuable. I got a lot of people that work for me. I got, you know, multiple businesses. I have, like, my time is taken up. I'm conducting a family. I'm a father to three children. You know, I got responsibilities. I got things that are more important than some rando on the internet sending me naked photos of herself expecting to, to elicit some kind of response from me. A response that she would expect. Uh, a response that, you know, that men would be simping for. And it's like, okay, fine. You know, if you got, if you got simps out there and that's what you're into, go ahead. You go, go after those men. It's all good. But you think you're going to, like, get with me because you do that? Yeah, no. Not interested. It's so interesting because how quickly they forget. You know, one of the biggest weaknesses of introverted sensing inferior. We're easily obligated. You can find this out in Season 21, Episode 7 or 8, which is How to Social Engineer ENTPs, where I talk about introverted sensing inferior struggling with... Struggling with Stockholm Syndrome, right? So like, and then like some some girl sends me naked photos of herself and whatnot, and like, oh great, looks like I'm being obligated here. Looks like they're trying to like manipulate me into giving me more attention because they're giving that to me or whatever. It's like some kind of weird covert contract that has like strings attached, and I'm just like, why? And and of course they think that's valuable. And it's like, that ain't valuable. That ain't valuable. For me, that's common. It's super common. That ain't valuable. That ain't special. So what makes you different than the other girls? You see what I'm saying? Like, it's just, what makes you different? So are like, are you going to simp after me? Are you going to fuck, like, are you going to submit? Like, what are you going to do? You know, that's the reality. That's what separates the women from the girls, you know, at least in Chase's perspective, you know what I'm saying? So many women out there, they just don't get it. They don't get it because they don't have daddies in their life to explain it to them, or they were rebellious from their daddies and decided not to listen to their daddies. Their daddies are trying to tell them this, and all of a sudden they go through life having these big body counts, these huge notch counts, thinking like they're actually valuable when they're not. When well, they don't even realize they just cheapen themselves and cheap cheapen women everywhere because of their behavior. It's just funny to me how I don't understand how women aren't like, you know, like being more, uh, you know, they they just enable each other with this behavior instead of like actually going out of the way to hold each other accountable. It's ridiculous to me. What happened to the mature feminine? Well, that's right. The mature feminine is the immature feminine where it's just this race to the bottom. And so few women out there realize that a woman of virtue is the woman who ha- who is the woman who is high value. She is the one who gets the ring. She is the one who gets the commitment. She is the one who gets the high value man. Not the rest of y'all. Not the rest of y'all sliding in the DMs and whatnot. Not you. It takes a lot of self discipline to resist that, especially when introverted sensing inferior is most easily obligated at the introverted sensing functions, and it's really really obligated. When it comes to like, for example, receiving naked photos from a woman because it creates unfair loyalty. Unfair loyalty, loyalty that these women didn't actually earn. And so introverted sensing aspirational has to be aware of when and who to be loyal to. But they don't know. They don't know. Who are they supposed to be loyal to, right? Well, that's up to them. That's up to them to figure out, and they have to figure out. But guess what? They're not going to figure that out unless they've been around the block, unless they've suffered the consequences 
of giving their attention to the wrong person, place, or thing. Like me, I gave the, the, my attention to the church once. That screwed me. It screwed me out of five grand. It screwed me out of the respect of my now ex-wife. It screwed me out of a lot because I put my attention in the wrong place. People, you have instrument sensing inferior and it goes aspirational. You have to understand what you're putting your attention onto versus what not to put your attention onto because attention and effort are your treasure. They are your treasure. Why? Because introverted sensing aspirational, the one action, the best example of what it looks like is that of self-sacrifice. I have to sacrifice every single day, right? For my family, for my children. I've had to sacrifice for the women in my life. I've had to uh, sacrifice for my businesses. I've had to sacrifice for the people that work for me. I continue, I have to sacrifice for the ego hacker community on a consistent basis, right? All these sacrifices, that's it for the sensing aspirational. And because I'm expected to make this sacrifice, even potentially to giving up my life, because it is written, there is no greater love than when a man gives up his life for his beloved, right? So if I'm expected to sacrifice my own life for that situation, as a result, I'm not interested in just giving my attention to just anyone. You see what I'm saying? What's the point? What's the point? You see? So if you being all introverted, sensing, aspirational, recognize that your lot in life is self-sacrifice. So you better be making sure that you're sacrificing your effort, your time, and your attention for the right cause, for the right thing, for the right people, for the right places, for the right thing. Something that's truly actually valuable. And not just some internet hoe who sends you naked photos of herself expecting you to be loyal to her. Like just some bimbo. And it's like, yeah, wow. You really want to unite yourself with that woman? The wayward woman according to Proverbs chapters 1 through 6? Is that really your lot in life? Is that what you really want? Wow. What a loser. Because that's what a simp is, right? A loser. How about you don't simp after those girls? And if they ain't simping after you because they want your treasure, your treasure being your time, your resources, your attention, your effort, that's your treasure, right? Tomasi talks about how in Rational Mail Volume 1, he talks about how you know women don't care about your relationship investment. Here's the thing, folks. A woman can't be a woman in my life unless she does care about my relationship investment because as soon as she doesn't care about my relationship investment as soon as she doesn't treat my effort like the treasure that it is and she doesn't treat it like it's sacred like it's the most important thing to her in her life she can't be in my life anymore and that's a fact so recognize that that's the truth that's the truth and especially if you're interested in sensing inferior, you better be living your life that way or else you'll have everything taken away from you. For it is written, do not put up surety for another, which means, for example, don't co-sign on a loan for another person, right? Well, don't co-sign with your time, attention, resources, effort on, you know, some cheap bimbo woman who actually, you know, imagines to herself delusionally how important she is because she has graced you in your DMs with naked photos of herself. And I'm just using that as a loose example, okay? Same thing goes with any woman who's like giving you that kind of attention or whatever. It's like, hey, if you're that easy with me, then you're that easy with other people. Anyway, folks, that's how I'd answer that question. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.